Hi, I'm Jamie Cornelia, and today I'm here with one of our own, Alicia Jensen, a national advocate for youth brain injuries. Hello, Alicia. Steve. So tell me a little bit about your story. How did you start getting involved with this? Um, so my sophomore year of high school, I was playing in a soccer game, and at this point I've been playing for my entire life. Um, and I was hit on the side of my head in my left temple and completely just blacked out right onto the ground, but uh, wasn't like out for too long to where I couldn't get back up. So I got back up, I kept playing. Um, I was, I just remember being completely nauseous, having no idea what was happening, like asking questions like, um, who's their best player? Who am I marking? Like basically questions that I should have already known because it yeah. was already like halfway through the first half. Um, so then I kept playing and it was a big championship game and my coach just didn't want to take me out, didn't want to admit that there was a problem. Um, and so I kept playing and then at the end of the second half, I was hit again in the top of my head. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, I was just completely done. So um, went to the hospital. They basically told me that I could have suffered from a condition called second impact syndrome, which um, it's getting a brain injury too close to another brain injury um, and then not giving your brain enough time to heal. So basically they told me multiple times that I'm lucky to be alive. So um, at that point, I was like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna play soccer again. And that was the beginning of my junior year, which is when like recruitments and all yeah. that thing starts for colleges and my entire world was just completely twisted upside down. So um, after I was told I wasn't gonna play soccer again, I got involved um, in a group called the Knockout Project, mm -hmm. um, which is a nonprofit foundation that kind of promotes um, advocacy and awareness for concussions and the issue and youth sports and things like that. Um, and then by my senior year of high school, um, in January, right before the Super Bowl in New York City, I spoke at the United Nations and I was, you know, amongst all of these big NFL guys and I was the only girl. And it was, it was just like a moment of complete like clarity for me that you know, that I needed to continue to be an advocate for concussions, especially in youth sports, um, because the reality is that it's not just in um, professional sports and things like that. So that's kind of where my advocacy came from. So what are some issues that you've become passionate about and how have you can turn those concerns into actions, I guess, through the Knockout Project yeah. and speaking? Um, so my biggest, my biggest passion, I think, is getting people aware of like the signs and the symptoms, um, kind of making sure that, you know, even though concussions are not super preventable, mm -hmm. um, the only way a concussion is going to be super preventable is if you just lay in bed for the rest of your life. Like, anybody can get a concussion at any time. Um, but in sports, it's super important to be aware of the signs and the symptoms and realize that when it's time to sit out, you need to sit out. Um, and I think that a lot of people are just, the athletic mindset is, uh, you know, you got to stay in, you got to keep going just because it's, you know, it's the bigger thing to do, it's the tougher yeah. thing to do. Um, but if you just sit out a few games, you know, it's better than sitting out for the rest of your life like I had to do. Um, so that's probably my biggest passion is to make sure that people are aware of the realities of what could happen. Um, because for the past almost five years, I had a headache every single day. Like I don't know what it's like to not have a headache. Um, but over time, you kind of just live through that. You kind of just get through it. Um, but that's probably my biggest passion is to get people aware of the signs and the symptoms and to know what to do afterwards. Wow, that that's very tough. But mm -hmm. I like that you've turned it into something where you yeah. can talk to people about it and become more aware about it. Yeah, yeah. So what are some important things the public needs to know about concussions and how they're being treated? and most importantly, how they can be prevented, which is something yeah. you're very passionate about. Um, so I remember my first team of doctors was um, at a pretty good hospital around here, so I felt like I was in good hands. Um, but over time, you know, my symptoms weren't changing, the treatments weren't working. Um, I was lying to my doctors, telling them I was better because I wanted to play. I, we just didn't have control over the situation at the time. Um, and I remember, you know, waiting like 45 minutes to see my concussion specialist, the guy that was managing all of my treatments and everything. Um, and he 
basically would make me wait like 45 minutes in the waiting room and in the exam room all together and then spend like five minutes with me maybe 10 minutes if I was lucky um, and I kind of just felt like very like a, almost like disregarded like kind of just not like he I was wasting his time yeah um, and I would go back and he'd be like okay you're good see you in two weeks like nothing's changed just keep doing what we're doing two weeks comes back I wait another 45 minutes in the exam room like I just think that when you're in a situation like this to where your world is just completely twisted you know you need a doctor to kind of sit with you and tell you this is what's happening to your body you know this is what could happen this is what I'm foreseeing for you in the future um, instead of just being like okay follow my finger yep still have a problem still can't stand on your foot still you know not doing that well on the impact test which is like a normal protocol test for you to take after a concussion um and i just felt very disregarded uh, and then at that point i you know was too afraid to ask the questions i needed to ask because i felt like he was in a hurry i felt you know rushed um, and i think that affected my treatments so i think you know i always when i'm talking to doctors and patients for concussions i, I kind of say you know they're scared they don't want to ask questions they don't they don't want to feel as though they're wasting your time um, they may feel that their questions are just kind of pointless because they're in the same spot as they were two weeks ago. Um, they might feel as though nothing can change. Um, so I always kind of tell doctors that it's really important to make your patients feel better about the situation, to kind of comfort them that, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, even though at that time, you know, they're going through a lot with not being able to play sports. You know, there's the depression aspect of it. There's the anxiety aspect of it. You know the physical pain not being in school i was out of school for you know weeks at a time um i wasn't able to do full days of school for so long and that affected my social life you know there's so many different aspects to it of just you know rather than just follow my finger and stand on one foot yeah. um, so that's a huge part of treatment is to kind of making the patient feel um whole making them feel as though everything's fine everything's going to be okay you know because it's it's most of the time when it's an adolescence it's so hard to handle you know i was 16 years old i didn't know, i didn't even know myself you know i was in the process of figuring out who i was who i wanted to be and then my identity was completely just taken from me so i think it's really important for especially any doctor but specifically a doctor who's treating a patient with a brain injury to kind of make them feel comfortable and not like they're being like wasting their time so so do you feel that high school and college sports are doing everything possible to prevent and teach people about concussions um i think that the sports culture in america is so hard because it's you know people think that it's just like oh rub some dirt on it you know you just got your bell wrong it's fine when i was a kid that you know when somebody got hit in the head it was just they were out for a few minutes and then they went back in um, and now we're seeing more and more through, you know, the Boston University Brain Bank and um, the Concussion Legacy Foundation, which I've been very involved with as well, um, who, you know, the movie Concussion with Will Smith, like so much like buzz around concussions and brain injuries. And then, you know, you have these big NFL guys who we all saw on TV growing up and our parents saw on TV growing up and they're killing themselves mm -hmm. and it's it's a problem and nobody's realizing that it's a bigger issue than it really is um so i think it's gotten a lot better since i first got my concussions but there's still so much work that needs to be done you know people are just not willing to admit that it's a problem um, people just want to keep playing sports but in reality it's not like we're saying you know you have to stop playing sports but we're saying you need to be more aware of what's happening um and i think that it's more than just them taking the impact test before every season. It's sitting down with every athlete and saying, these are the signs and the symptoms. You know, if you get hit in the head, you're done for the rest of the game. We're pulling you out, not taking that chance because it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, but I think we're slowly, we're getting there. Definitely. I think, you know, all the people are coming up and telling the stories and, and being, you know, advocates for concussions and kind of making sure that people are more aware of the reality of what a concussion actually really is so well it's good news to hear that improvements are being yeah, made yeah. and will continue to be yeah, made for sure um in your opinion what still needs to be done to protect athletes and the general public from going through what you went through as a patient 
Um, I just think that people need to be more aware. I think people don't realize the impact that a brain injury has. You know, I can't graduate college on time because I had to take less credits. You know, I had to um, work my way up to a full course load in college. I didn't even think I was going to college. You know, it affects your social life. It affects your emotional, like, being. It affects who you are. It affects everything you do every single day. Waking up in the morning, you know, slowly getting up, slowly like making sure I'm not dizzy, gonna fall on the ground, like making sure that I'm able to, you know, even brush my teeth. You know, I had to brush my teeth in the dark. We had to eat dinner in the dark. My family had to eat dinner in the dark so many nights. Like it's people just kind of need to be more aware of how it affects you and it's not just a headache. You know, it affects every single aspect of your life. And I think people definitely need to be more aware of that, especially parents and coaches and doctors who might not know much about it, but need to take it more seriously because it is an issue in all sports, even ones that are like super non-contact. You know, I've had people that, you know, get concussions in volleyball and golf and like random accidents that just happen. Um, and it can, it can just happen whenever, wherever, at any time. Yeah, it's not like a broken bone. No. It's not going to heal as quickly. Nope. All right. Well, thank you very much for speaking with yeah. me. Um, thanks, Alicia. I'm Jamie Canelia for the Power of the Patient Project.